What's up? What's up? Ishin here from C0 Media, live from Tokyo. I don't know how many intros I've done from Tokyo where it's just like me on the bed. Today is going to be an exciting video for any of my Nissan or Nismo fans because I'm headed to Nismo factory in Yokohama. After that, I'm gonna be heading up to the Nissan Engine Museum. So there's gonna be like all these RB engines, SR engines, L20A engines, which is the one I have in my Datsun. After that, hopefully if I have time, I'll be headed to the Nissan headquarters where they'll be displaying more of like a modern day dealership type style cars but that might be interesting too because a lot of JDM cars that sold here in Japan is not even available in the US or Australia or Europe or wherever you're in the world so that'll be a cool content to bring to you and if this episode does not get too long when I'm editing it, I'm gonna throw in the Daikoku PA night meeting videos and night highway run videos because that's what I'll be doing after I go to Yokohama and uh, check out some of these museums. If that footage doesn't make it to this video, the next video that's gonna be uploaded will be me at Daikoku at night showing you some of the cars and how we do it here in Japan. So here we go. This year guys, it's Tokyo lifestyle. It is hot as F right now here in summertime it is about uh, 80 90 degrees and humidity is about 80 percent some of you might be asking why I am not driving today because in Tokyo we don't need to drive in fact uh, taking the train is a lot faster a lot cheaper and a lot more comfortable than sitting in traffic in a vehicle I am uh, taking the subway from my station down to Yokohama which is about an hour south from where Tokyo is. I'll be taking the Yamanote line which is like a circular uh, train that goes around Tokyo and then head down to Yokohama which kind of spits down towards the south. So here's an interesting site you don't really see in the states. It's a hydrogen station by my house. This used to be a gas station but they converted to hydrogen station. And of course there are vending machines everywhere in Japan. You can buy cigarettes in vending machines, you can buy magazines, you can buy beer, you can drink on the streets. I think there was a statistics that there is about a vending machine every 100 meters. So it is super convenient. <laughs> Alright guys, now I'm at Shinkoyasu Station, right? Off by Yokohama. It's about 10 minute walk from here. It's kind of like middle of nowhere compared to where I live in downtown Tokyo. But this is where this mall is and Nissan engine room is. I hope I can make it to both uh, facilities because they do close in two more hours. Man, this place is actually a lot further than I thought from the train station. I've been walking for 15 minutes. It is hot as hell outside. Sweating my ass off, and I don't sweat much in general. Yeah, Subaru STI TS Edition. I don't know my Subarus, but I think that's a JDM version, right? There's a wing on the back. I also see Nissan up there, which means we're almost there. And this is definitely a Nissan parking lot when you see our all 34. Hey right, guys, we have finally made it. Here's a Nissan engine room. A little late, as always. That's nothing new for this YouTube channel, but I hope I can capture everything that's here. All right guys, we have made it. We're inside the museum. Let's walk around and see what's here. So up front we have a display of all the parts that goes into an engine. This would be the MR platform. Now I'm in the main engine room. Looks like there's a lot of engines here separated by generations. So I'm gonna walk through most of them, see if uh, there's anything interesting that I wanna film. So what's cool with these engines here is that a lot of them have technical explanation as to what's unique about them what kind of technology they implemented for the generation it's also cut up so you can see what's going on inside the engine as well 
So here is an interesting massive engine. It's called the LD28 from the 70, 79. It's actually a straight six engine, but it's diesel made for uh, passenger vehicles. Went into the Cedric wagon. Here is another overhaul of the motor out of a VQ37. It's practically explaining how the VVEL system works. So you got the cam spinning and the valve on the back here and once you open up the system you can see that the cam gets more aggressive and the valve opens further tone it down you get lower lift so on the left is a vq37 head with a vvel but on the right here is a vq35 head without the electric system so it's just a simple exhaust intake cam as you would see out of like a 4063 engine this is out of the nissan gtr gt car from 2009 it's a 3.4 liter v8 na system it's cool to see nissan doing v8 race car engines here's another cool engine you don't see every day this is a v12 called vrt35 90 Two, 3.5 liter. This thing again is an A but makes over 630 horsepower at 11,600 RPM. And this massive engine is a motor from the 60s. It's a 6.0 liter V12 engine operating about 590 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. This thing is absolutely massive. There's a transmission bolted right onto it. Driving something like this would have been absolutely insane. And this motor goes in probably one of the most iconic cars from the Nissan R90CK Group C racing car that competed in the Le Mans. This is a V8 engine and I love how far the turbos stick out. One here, one there. This one's making about 800 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. I can't even imagine how badass this sounded back in the days. I would love to swap this in my FD. And this is a cool little engine. This is one of the first engines Nissan ever produced. It's the Moto 7. It's literally called 7, the engine. From 1935, it makes about uh, 15 horsepower, 1.5, and has about 722 cc's of displacement. Inline 4, side valve engine and it was installed in the Datsuns, first gen Datsuns. There's so many engines I can talk about here but I'll only talk about the ones that's kind of unique and different for me like this one here is from the uh, 60s Skyline, the Prince Skyline and this engine makes stunning 70 horsepower 1.5 liter setup and this is the engine I am definitely familiar with the L20 that's basically the same one in my Datsun except this one is a 2.0 liter and it's got a baby turbo on it on the display here it says it's making 145 horsepower at 5600 rpm which is kind of accurate because my 2.8 made about 140 horsepower at the wheels pretty much stock in the year 2017 and here's rb series rb20 e cut up quite different from the rb26 and rb25s and here is the s20 engine it is double overhead cams straight inline six two liters making about 160 horsepower this is in one of the first generation gtrs so another iconic engine and it has been chopped up as well so you can see how the double overhead cam works timing chain and all of that goodies here is a vg30 dett engine that some of you might be familiar with because it came in the g32 you can see the turbo on the left there with the clear enclosure this was actually nissan's very first v6 engine some people love it some people hate it and here's another iconic engine the rb26 do i even need to explain this thing i don't think so twin turbo 2.6 liter a lot of people do like rb30 conversion and keep the rb26 head and make a bunch of power this is still today one of the best engines ever produced in my mind next to like 2j's and 4g63 of course and people are still making thousands of horsepower with the 26.
setup and here's the SR20 uh, I'm sure a lot of drifters who are my subscribers are very very familiar with these SR engines I'm not the biggest fan of the SR20s but a lot of drifters in Japan actually still use this and crank out like 300 350 horsepower because that's plenty of power to be drifting around one downside to the SR engines is that once something goes everything else goes so you have to replace the whole engine and we can't forget the VR38 the engine that comes in the latest generation GTR the 3.8 liter each one of these GTRs are handmade so it does come with the nice little emblem as you see here I personally wanted to see Nissan do another straight 6 twin turbo setup but uh, I feel like they did a great job building this engine as it destroys everything out there the bang for buck performance out of these are just unbeatable still to this day and god damn it this room is too big for me to look at even though i would love to because i only have like 30 more minutes let's go to the technical stuff this seems like the uh that room seems like history of nissan and this room seems like more technical engine stuff never seen this before this looks like a supercharger what is this hr 12 dd R 1.5 liter gasoline injection supercharged engine and damn look at this display guys I know so many people and myself included who get hard looking at this over here's the RB25 engine rods we got the one after it was forged before it was machined and on the bottom we have one that's complete and machined and this is a block build process of the MR20 you start with your aluminum raw material it gets molded into the engine block shape and then the shaved off top surface so it's nice and flat and it goes to another couple processes so it's good to go inside and molder same thing here with the crankshaft it's just a simple steel rod gets shaped and then it gets machine again and this room is kind of cool with the history of the company you get history of cars and you get these little japanese car models explaining how it has evolved over the years and this one is particularly about the skylines these are the builders of the r35 gtr engines for those of you who are not familiar the vr38 dtt engine in r35 gtr is hand built and only the qualified mechanics can build these engines and these are the four mechanics that build these engines of course i gotta check out the parking lot real quick as well i think this is just the employee parking lot so not much that's unique here but i do see cars like this uh what looks like a nissan stasia with bbs wheels this looks pretty cool whoa is that a nissan leaf with t37s damn what is going on here this is a nismo edition leaf i never knew such thing existed and over here we got what looks like a nissan skyline gt uh oh sorry four you can tell by just looking at the front fascia it's not as aggressive the wheels are a little smaller and uh it's basically a bitch version of a gtr but it's cheaper than a gtr more affordable some people actually do like wide body conversion on the GT R34s and make it look like a GT R wide body which is completely cool with me because what's the point of owning a base model Skyline when you can make it wider and cooler and swap the engine and make it basically like R34 GTR but anyways that's the end of the engine museum I gotta head down to the Nismo museum where they actually park the cars so um, I'm waiting for my friend Keenan to pick me up in the EVO 7 and we're gonna head down there real quick and I just have to get my cut of this water because it's hot as hell before I went to the next Nismo factory but look at this, they have Skyline GTR water At the Nismo factory. Man, it's pretty. Hello! <laughs> Alright, we're at the Nismo factory a little late as usual, but we'll see what kind of cars are here. What's going on here? In the parking lot, there are also 34 looking mint GTR with Nismo wheels. This thing is clean. 
Nismo van? It's got Nismo wheels. El Gran. Nismo Edition? El Gran, what the fuck? Alright. They say that car right there, the McLaren 12C block was based off the same block in this car. Oh, no way. Yeah, the uh, McLaren 12C and the McLaren P1, they use the same engine block. Oh my, this place is beautiful, look at this. Here's the Omori Factory Esport R RB26. Actually, no, this is RB28 because it's been stroked to 2.8 liter. 500 horsepower, 4R, good price of $71,000 US. So we got more engines here. This is S2, 400 horsepower. R2 with the gold valve cover. This, I believe, is the Le Mans car with the V8 3.5 liter, from what I remember. Correct me if I'm wrong. This thing looks beautiful. And unfortunately today I can't go into the actual shop because this was more like a spontaneous visit and I couldn't arrange anything. But you can see there's skylines everywhere. Got the Z in front of me, R34, got the Nismo GTR, R32, R34, 370Z. So this is a Nietzsche Silvia Turbo from the 80s. It is a four-cylinder Nissan, four-cylinder turbo, making about 500 horsepower. Got the full lug race car wheels. You don't see that nowadays. And this, guys, is the D tune, the last oh, sorry, for GTR that ever came out straight from Nissan. This thing is so beautiful. It got the aggressive fender there. That's actually functional. It actually vents out air. It was cool when this GTR Z tune came out because they built it using a used GTR because there was obviously no more brand new all sorry for Skylines GTRs left over. They used used GTRs overhauled it and we built the whole thing, including like it's got stiffer bushing, suspension is adjustable, it's got carbon fiber drive shaft, titanium exhaust, the engine is fully rebuilt with new crank rod pistons and all that head is built. And it's making reliable 500 horsepower. It has been tested on the Nerva Ring a couple of times. And uh, if you want a reliable Nissan GTR R34 out the box to hoon around on the racetracks, this would be the ultimate package for you. Except, I think when it came out, it was like 180,000 US, which is actually kind of reasonable nowadays. But in 2017 GTR market, it's probably skyrocketed, double, triple, quadrupled in price. The hood is different, the fender is different, the grill is different. I see a lot of aero upgrades here and there. Absolutely beautiful. Also for GTR. GTR selfie. <laughs> Since I can't buy this engine for $70,000, I'm gonna check out the shop and see what they have. And show you exactly how ridiculous these prices are. Three grand for seat belts. Oh man, these are uh, GT4 Nismo wheels for seven hundred dollars each, which is actually not that bad. Eighteen by nine and a half. That's actually not as bad as I thought. You see those seat belts, man? Oh, Three yeah. grand. What? <laughs> Nismo. Yeah, Nismo racing harness. You know, these might be rare in the future. He ho ho held on to these. Yeah. For like the next 10 years. Wheel spacers, $200. That is definitely overpriced. <laughs> they have yeah, never. Name there. They have never heard of eBay. Yeah, you're not gonna even see it. <laughs> <laughs> no way you're gonna see that. R34 headlights. Damn. Two R34 grand. headlight? Yeah. Two grand. You got the Xenon headlight. Lamp assemblies. Mm. That's a lot. That's expensive. That's unheard of in the Evo world. <laughs> Nismo shift knobs, the carbon fiber goodies, Nismo intercooler. Got turbos here as well. You can build a whole car with the parts here. You can get an authentic GTR emblem for about 100 bucks. Oh, and they sell the titanium GTR R32 key for 5,000 yen. I'm not sure if that's a good deal actually, because if you lose these, it's extremely hard to uh, replace because these are made out of titanium and it's very hard to find in the states. I'm actually gonna look on eBay right now and see how much they go for because if it's more than 5,000 uh, 5, yen, 
I'll get it and just put it up on、uh, eBay US. <laughs> no, five grand for the authentic Z Tune carbon carbon front bumper for five grand. That's not that's that's reasonable, I guess. I mean, it's still expensive as hell. But this bathroom has camshafts on the wall and it's like pre-grinded condition too. So that's kind of cool. All right, so that was a new small factory. We're、uh, headed to Daikoku now. Meet a meet a friend while we're in there. So we're gonna get some yakiniku and hand out to Daikoku. And I'm not sure if this video is going to be together with Daikoku video. So if it cuts here, that means、uh, there's gonna be another video next week for the Daikoku car meet. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy the footage. Peace.